Welcome to this talk. This is for the United States of Forensics. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I am both. Thank you. Thank you. I am both flattered and surprised to see the turnout. Um, I, I'm still wondering where all the hungover people are. Um, but thank you for coming at any rate. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about vehicle forensics. I can tell you this is something that I get really excited about. Um, these are our objectives today. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me and, and talk about what we're going to talk about. Then we're going to go into a little bit of history regarding the infotainment and the vehicular technology. Um, as you guys know, this is a really new field, so I'm going to give you guys what I know. We're going to talk a little bit about the way ahead. Um, we'll touch on trends and challenges. And then, of course, we're going to kind of get into the meat and potatoes of things, where we're going to go in and identify um, the accessing of the components and talk about how do we actually analyze that data. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit about me. Uh, I, I work at Telecommunication Systems, or TCS. I am an art of exploitation instructor, and my primary focus is the forensics track. So we have quite a few forensics uh, classes, and um, that's where uh, my expertise is. Before that, I was at DC3. Not sure if you guys have heard of that, but it is Department of Defense Computer Forensics Laboratory. Um, I was there for about five or six years, and then prior to that, I really just focused on information assurance, did some ComSec analysis type stuff, um, and then of course I am prior Navy. Got to throw that in. All right, let's dive right in. So this is where we started, right? I like to kind of paint this picture for you guys. This is where we are now. Even more robust systems than that. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about something that is, is pretty controversial. If you ask five people, what is the difference between telematics and infotainment, you're probably going to get five different answers. Um, and the reason for that is, honestly, you know, the lines are just pretty blurred. But I'm going to give you guys a pretty standard definition here, OK? Mm -hmm. Telematics is actually the combination of telecommunications and informatics. Makes sense, right? So basically, this is going to be your wireless connectivity. This is your connectivity. That's the word that you want to remember. Now, infotainment, that's going to be the combination of your information and your entertainment. Um, this is usually what the user is going to identify as your interface, if you will. So that's, those are where your differences are going to lie. Your telematics is going to circle around the connectivity, and then your infotainment is actually going to be more so the interface, the integration, OK? Um, so let's talk about telematics. This has been happening for a while, right? 1996, you guys remember OnStar? When that rolled out, they had kind of a lull there for some time, I believe. But um, everybody kind of caught on and said, you know what, this is a, this is a neat thing. Let's get this going. Uh, and then, and of course, they wanted to uh, then integrate the uh, infotainment. Um, again, this is going to be some of your wireless protocols. And, and we're seeing more and more of those continue to emerge. More specifically, I want to address 4G LTE. Now, when we talk about the way ahead, um, towards the end of this presentation, I will tell you guys uh, that, is, that is absolutely where a lot of the, the automakers and, and the teams that are coming, coming together to do this are, are trying to go, is, is with the, the LTE. Okay? So with the increase of infotainment system technology and telematics, the ability to differentiate between the two can be a challenge. Okay? And as we move forward, as we continue to integrate, these two are going to become even more and more blurred. All right, this is kind of a fun slide. Um, how many security people do I have in here? Yeah, OK, this is going to scare the ever-living crap out of you. I promise you. I know it does me anyway. All right, so 84%, a recent, a recent poll showed 84% of drivers would like to control their features uh, using touchscreen. Doesn't seem surprising, right? 
I mean, we already kind of are. But let's go a step further. When I say they want to use um, touchscreen, I'm talking odometers, gas gauge. They've truly expressed this interest. 83% want to receive updates wirelessly. Anybody see a problem with that? <laughs> OK, furthermore, 76% would actually like to connect to the internet using their vehicle as a Wi-Fi hotspot. And I can promise you that's coming. 67% would like to download applications and updates directly to their vehicle. Anybody see a problem there? This guy does. Um, now this is my favorite and I like to leave it for the end. 61% um, would actually like to pay for something using their debit or credit card linked to their inf infotainment system in their vehicle. I just don't know if that's something I could get on board with. Um, so again, this is what, you know, we went out and we gauged. I mean, this is what people want. They want every single thing, which means we're going to continue to see an increase in user data within these vehicles. And why is this important? Well, because the market will respond. This, uh, the automotive interest industry is actually a $2.6 trillion industry. Here in this graph, you'll actually see the um, forecasted revenue for 2016. Now, I actually believe that this has increased for, for the forecast for 2016. Um, a lot of, you guys may have seen, there was a lot of talk at CES a couple of weeks ago regarding um, telematics and infotainment systems and things like that. Um, so this is, again, wildly popular. It's a good old uh, supply and demand, right? As a mobile society, many of the vehicle manufacturers are actually embracing this. Now, no one really heard this as loud and clear as Ford. And we're going to kind of talk about Ford. I'm going to pick on Ford a little bit today. In 2007, they became what we like to call the game changer. Um, they rolled out their Ford Sync. Now, in the end, what do the consumers really want? What is one thing that they can agree on? Arrive safely while staying connected. That is really the sole purpose of trying to develop things. All the, extra come in, all the extras come into play as well. But that's the primary focus. Here we are. All right, so what are our challenges? One of the biggest challenges that I want to address, and I mean, this is a really big deal. Um, it's, it's something that a lot of the automakers uh, are, are really trying to figure out how do we circumvent this. Uh, you know, typically a vehicle is actually manufactured three to five years out. That's not cool when you're trying to get the latest and greatest in a car, right? So we look at our mobile devices and we look at these, these other uh, things that we're using. Those are updated a couple of different times throughout the year. So how do you stay current? Um, basically, this is kind of the same situation as, you know, if you guys remember in the 90s and, and you know, you, you, bought, you bought a desktop computer and within a year it was obsolete. Um, that's what the automak automakers are trying to get around right now. Um, one of our other challenges from a forensics perspective is that data can actually be scattered. Um, data can be uh, located in, in different areas. Streamlining is, is not something that we're seeing just yet. And again, this is, this is really, really, you know, a, a pretty much a new field. Um, you're not, you're not going to see a lot of uh, tools, commercial tools out there, and we're going to talk about some of the tools as well. Um, but the lack of streamlining with the designs in the infotainment system has, has actually become a little bit of a challenge. I mean, it's not something that we can't get around. Um, but I always say, when, when I talk about forensics, the first thing you need to understand is, where is the data stored, how is the data stored, and how can I access the data? You know, those are three big things that you need to understand. And when you have these vehicles rolling these, these infotainment systems out, it's kind of difficult to, to stay abreast with that, okay? My clicker does not want to work. There we are. All right, so let's understand some capabilities. So what are we talking about? 
Uh, today's infotainment systems functionalities contain a multitude of connectivity possibilities. I think we know that. We have Bluetooth, we have USB. Um, so from a forensics perspective, these systems can actually contain a treasure trove of user information. Now, again, that's really scary to me. Um, I'm going to show you guys, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story, but I'm going to show you guys some, some data. Um, so I went out on eBay and purchased a Ford Sync. And I have all of Jerry's information. I can tell you his mama's number. I can tell you where, he, where he's from. Um, who here actually has programmed home into your vehicle with the address? I probably wouldn't do that. That's, that's not uh, something that I would do. Because I now know where Jerry's home is. So this information is being turned over. You're trading these vehicles in. There's not a process for wiping this data, right? I mean, does CarMax ever say, OK, let's ensure this is forensically wiped before you leave? No, they don't say that. So basically, someone's leaving with your data. When we're talking about used vehicles. Um, so over time, of course, digital forensics has spanned from computers. Then you know the hot thing was mobile devices, which to me still kind of is. Um, and now I think what you're really going to see is a big push for the vehicle stuff. Um, because again, everything is beginning to integrate. Everything is really starting to meet in the middle, uh, if you guys haven't noticed that. Um, so yeah, this is a, a subset that has continued to gain a significant amount of focus within the community. And I think, again, you're going to see it more and more. So let's talk about it from an evidentiary value. Um, what are we talking about? Of course, extensive user data. We're talking waypoints, saved locations, Jerry's home, MP3 files. Now, why would I care about MP3 files? I mean. It doesn't really matter to me that you just downloaded the My Cyrus album. But what it can do is that getting this data can assist in you cooperating with other evidence. OK? Does that make sense? Um, attached devices, that's kind of important. Um, Bluetooth Mac IDs. Uh, some email messages can, can get in there as well. SMS as well image files, user voice profiles. Um, as we talk about the way ahead, and as we talk about what's coming and what's next, I'm going to tell you guys one of the big things that you're going to see, it's going to be more voice activated features. Um, so when, when the automakers meet with, with um, whoever it is that they need to go out and meet with, they say, how can we make this safe? Eyes on the road and hands on the steering wheel. That's the two things that they want to do. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to make anything and everything that we can possibly make voice activated, voice activated. Um, our VIN numbers, of course. Uh, various mobile phone sync data. So a lot of people will ask me when they take my mobile forensics class, um, I'm actually, it, it's, it, it's from a selfish point, but I always like to talk about this as well for just a, a, a quick point. But some people will say, well, you know, how is this mobile forensics? And I'm like, well, first of all, how much more mobile can you get? We're talking about a car. Uh, and secondly, something that you want to think about is that I've got, I've got mobile device uh, information synced in here, right? So you're getting information from these mobile devices as well. Um, user established playlist. Again, why is that important? It could absolutely help you and assist, or assist you in cooperating with other evidence, other data. Um, call logs, I mean, that's just to name a few. All right, so let's move in now a little bit and talk about design. Another particular challenge, again, like I said before, is the lack of the streamlining. Um, understanding, understanding the capabilities of each system can be pretty difficult um, from a, a, you know, the initial phase of, of beginning diagnostics, how do we approach this? What is our plan of attack with the forensics and with the analysis, obviously? 
Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Ford. I said we'd pick on Ford. I won't pick on Ford too bad. But because they are what I'm pretty much considering the leader in the market right now, um, nobody's really doing it well uh, because of the challenges that I've identified. And I, and I think that's, of course, arguable, but they're, they're still a lot lacking. I can say that. So let's look at Ford. Now, we've, we've all heard of Ford Sync, probably. And we've all gotten in someone's rental car or someone's Ford car, and we've said, oh, yeah, that's probably Ford Sync. So let's talk about the different types, because not all are created equal. Here you're going to see the in-dash navigation system plus sync. Now this is going to be your standard radio plus sync. Let's jump into the timeline a little bit. So your first generation, again, I said it rolled out about 2007. That was 2007 to 2009-ish, okay? Um, the second generation, you're looking at 2009 to about 2011. Uh, the third generation, 2011 to now. Who's, who's good at math? Do you guys see what's happening here? <laughs> so that leads me to believe, and actually I do know, Ford is actually planning on rolling out their next generation in the 2015 Mustang. So we should see that around the spring. Um, we should find out a little bit more about what it's going to look like. But I can tell you, um, one of the big trends are uh, apps. And we'll, we'll definitely talk about apps. All right, so we're talking about, um, you know, what is, what is our OS? What are we, what are we building this on? Uh, so basically, it's, it's a Microsoft Windows Embedded Automotive, um, or CE Automotive in some. This is actually not considered a trimmed down version. This is a customized version. Um, so it's, it's, it's something that you need to understand if you want to learn, or if you want to be able to go in and actually exploit that, right? All right, so back to the generations. We want to talk about understanding what we're dealing with. So our first generation, our sync module, we're looking at Microsoft uh, Automotive. The data stored here is going to be phone-related, music index, paired devices, uh, things like that. Now, the head unit that we talked about with a navigation system, uh, the OS on that was Pioneer. Um, the data stored on that was music files, photo, photos, and, and, of course, navigation data. Uh, navigation data is, is huge. You know, it's, it, I remember when GPS forensics was a big thing. Everybody was like, hey, you know, Who's supporting the Tom Toms or the Gar or the Garmins? How are we going to get this data off? Now we can go into one single integrated component and actually pull that data off. Um, so then we move into our second generation. Not a whole lot changed. Um, really, just in the head unit for the navigation system, we're looking at a, a different OS. But there was one big thing here. We're looking at a 40 gig. Um, uh, it was a pay to drive, or it is a pay to drive, I should say. Um, so we were like, okay, that's cool. So we went from solid state storage, we went to having um, hard drives actually into the vehicle, and now we're going to be seeing more connecting our external devices. And then, of course, our third generation, um, which we're actually going to take a look at this. Um, I, I brought you guys a cool video of, of actually how you go in and disassemble this. I can talk about it, but unless you see it, it's, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to really hit home. So here for our third generation, again, single integrated component. Integration, integration, integration. I can't say that enough. Um, OS is going to be Microsoft Auto OS as well. Um, Something here uh, that we saw was an SD card. So someone gave me, gave me a call and said, Courtney, I need you to come over and take a look at this car. We need to do some forensics on it. Um, it's a brand new model, and it has, it has an SD card in the glove compartment, or I'm sorry, in the console. And I'm like, sweet, FTK Imager is free. All I got to do is run over and just 
grab this thing right out of the out of the uh, the center console. Like this is going to be awesome. So I did, um, and I imaged it, and I really didn't get that much data. <laughs> Um, so, so what is the point of it? It actually, your SD card uh, that resides in those center consoles actually just supports your navigation system, okay? So the present time, we're looking at our single integrated component, right? We're going to break this down a little bit. So the sync module is actually going to be mounted to the back of the screen. Um, all of your user data is actually going to be contained within that sync module. Now, I say all of it. I mean, there are different plans of attacks. But if you really want to go for what I've referred to earlier in this talk as the treasure trove of user data, then this is where you want to hit it, OK? There's our SD card. That's really all that happens when you remove it. So that tells me right there what's on it. And then, of course, like I said, imaging it so what were our previous go-tos? You know, now we're, we're, we're approaching this a little bit differently. Um, some of our previous go-tos, you know, a, a lot of people, when I talk about this, um, you can tell some of the people that, that haven't really dealt with infotainment systems, because they'll say, oh, man, just, just get, go for the black box. Get all the data off of that, right? And sometimes, yeah, that's, you know, sometimes that is the data that you want. Um, so in a former life, that was really our, our typical approach. Um, it was the black box, or the you know some may some may consider the event data recorder. Uh, this is a really popular with with our crash investigations, and and I'll tell you why. The idea behind the the installation of this to even even to begin with um, is actually to enable the vehicle to make the decision whether or not we want to deploy that airbag. Um, now, it logs things as well. Uh, essentially, records data regarding the, the native state of the vehicle at any given moment. So you're looking at your seatbelt usage, your speed impacts, and things like that. All right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. This is my favorite part. They all, they all say I'm really dangerous when you give me a screwdriver, because I'll just, I love to take all these things apart. Um, so here we've got, for Ford SUVs, the first and second generation, you, you want to look behind the center console. That's where you're going to find your sync module. Um, it's actually held in with four clips. You don't need any special tools. Uh, a regular sc screwdriver will actually work with this. Um, oh, here. All right. Here I want to show you guys. Oh, wait. So this is going to be our third generation, OK? Again, I can tell you guys all I want, but until you see just how easy it is, and I apologize that this is looking a little skewed, you're actually going to see how this pops off, hopefully. Of course, technical difficulties. So there it is, OK? Now this tool, if I could just freeze that for you guys, but basically, you can see as it pulls out, this port is being expo exposed on the side. Now this tool that is being used is called Ivy. This is one of the first commercial tools on the market that is actually able to go in and um, be completely automated. It attaches directly to that port. All right, I think you guys have seen enough of that because that video is not working out for me. Um, but anyway, that's really just, just how easy it is. You, t you pop that center piece off, you remove the, the head unit out, and then that side port, what's cool about Ivy is that it actually made that a two-way talking point, okay? So you attach that um, commercial tool, and it will actually begin the extraction. It is very, very easy. So here's what Ivy looks like. Um, and, you know, I like, to, I like to present this because there aren't a lot of uh, commercial solutions and there's certainly not a lot of automated solutions. Um, so here, here's Ivy. What you're going to get out of that is you're going to get points of interest, some of your recent destinations, save locations, and active routes. 
So it's pretty cool. It just dumps that data automatically for you. Um, and it doesn't take long. That's pretty dangerous, right? Again, I just left my car at CarMax. Someone could acquire this tool, and then they're going to get my data. Um, you can go on eBay right now. I think for 100 bucks is probably one of the mid-range. And you can actually um, go and buy someone's used sync module. So anyone that wants to, to try and do that and get some forensic data, um, call me first, because it's a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> so here's what your, mo or your, your Ford Sync module is going to look like. <clears throat> now, another funny story. Someone, same person, calls and says, Courtney, OK, sorry about that whole SD card thing. I think we've got something else for you. And I'm like, all right, sweet. It, it's the flash chip, that's where my data's at, we're good to go. So I take this thing apart, and this is what I see. Does anybody see a problem with this? That's, uh, that's, that's some pretty aggressive epoxy on that, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not the most graceful, so I, I could see me burning this board up pretty quickly. Um, so, Basically, the way we circumvented that was, uh, I did not do this, but uh, we had it done to where it was actually, the data was actually accessed through pinouts, okay? Um, but if you can, you basically just do a dump of, of that chip, okay? Um, this is gonna create your binary file for you. And there are a couple of different ways to look at it. Um, I particularly like hex. I don't know why, but I do. Um, and here you, you will see, these are some song lists and things like that, uh, playlist and, and some songs that were pulled off of that. Again, what, what am I going to do? I'm going to take that, if, if possible, and I'm going to take the mobile device that's associated with the case or whatever, whatever the situation is, and I'm actually going to say, yes, this phone was here. And then I'm also going to look at attached devices. Remember all the other items that we talked about that can be pulled? All of it is right here. Uh, you can, obviously, you can do searches on it. Um, some of the other tools, I, I like to tell people what's good and then what's not good. Um, because, you know, I, I want you guys not to have to go down that road. But I try to use Bulk Extractor, and, and there really wasn't a lot that, that I could get off of that. It was a lot of the Microsoft registration data and things like that. Um, but again, there's just not a lot of commercial automated solutions that are out there right now. Of course, you can also image the hard drive for the older generations. This uh, is yet another approach that we're talking about. Um, this is actually in the back of the head unit for the first and second generations. Uh, this is not as, it's not that easy popping it out and, and just imaging the drive. Um, there is typically an ATA password lock on it. And there are ways to get around that, of course. Um, there's always a way. But yeah, Ford is, Ford is uh, pretty, pretty picky about that. And you actually have to, uh, just as a standard user, you actually have to go through them uh, uh, if something happens with your hard drive, unless, of course, you are feeling frisky and want to play with it yourself. All right, so what's ahead? Again. A huge emphasis on the connected car. Um, everything is wanting to be connected. Uh, you've got vehicles that are talking to other vehicles. Uh, you know, I, I left out one thing, and I, I didn't really want to go down this road. Uh, but obviously, there uh, you can also do different acquisitions through the CAN bus, um, and. and the CAN bus is actually going to be basically your, your, your network infrastructure of the vehicle. Um, so a lot of the connectivity is actually going to, to come into play. Um, we, we want these vehicles connected to other vehicles, other applications, things like that. So what some of the automak automakers are actually saying is, um, so what apps do we actually put on here? Um, with safety coming into play, 
I think, I think it's GM or Ford that's actually saying, yes, we will, um, GM, I'm sorry, I think it's GM. Yes, we will do like a Netflix thing, but it's actually gonna be farmed out to the back seat video, um, heads, or screens. Um, so again, they're wanting to keep that safety into play. Um, again, more app-based interfaces. Anyone that's writing apps right now for vehicles, that's going to be a huge thing. Um, they're gonna try to roll in as much as they can that actually makes sense, but it needs to make sense, basically. Um, and then, of course, we talked about more speech-activated interfaces. I mean, after all, as we said, the goal is to keep hands on the wheel and eyes on the road, right? So that's really about all I have. And at this time, I'll go ahead and open the, the floor for questions, if anyone has any questions. No questions. Hi. Thank you. I think you asked this question. <clears throat> um, okay, so let me make sure I understand your question. You want to. You want. You want to know. The infotainment system, what is the other connectivity with the infotainment system? Or the other components within the vehicle? I don't know how the infotainment system is connected to the other components of the vehicle. How it pertains to the other things connected to the vehicle. Understand. Okay, so remember when we talked about the plans of attack? So basically you have your black box, you've got your CAN bus stuff, and then you've got your infotainment system. Your infotainment system, it will log some of the driving capabilities, if that's what we're, we're talking about, but a lot of that is going to come from other areas of the, of the vehicle. Um, there's a program called Vehicle Spy. A lot of that will actually farm out some of that data for you as well. Um, but you're not really seeing a lot of that, and I don't believe that to be one of the goals of the automakers, um, you know, with, with controlling that. I mean. I understand we have cars that are parking themselves and, and, and things like that, um, but but I don't believe that's going to be the focus for the infotainment systems to come. So, yeah. so, so you have it uh, on the purpose you have it focused on a lot of the crash data information. Correct. But I do have one question for you with regards to that. What about the bad guy? Uh, I'm the guilty guy in a pretty serious accident. How is that data? Like, I've got a four-year hybrid that has these systems. Oh, okay, fun. Okay, um, so in short, I think what you're asking me is, how do I protect my data, right? Specifically with the crash data that we're talking about? Well, how do I prove that data hasn't been altered? Whether it's crash, I go to the junkyard or whatever, or the wires, and there's that kind of thing. If I'm the guy that's right, right, how do you prove the data hasn't been altered, and so on and so forth? So here's the thing with black boxes, and a lot of people probably don't realize this. But for a long time, we've actually been accessing them, and we've been pulling that data out for crashes and things like that. Um, because again, what, what is it? It's, it's kind of re uh, recording the native state of the vehicle. What a lot of people don't understand is that that data is, at, all, at, at, at times, it's actually sporadic. Um, I've heard that it cannot be trusted. And, and I apologize, I've not done a lot with the black box stuff. Um, but as far as you protecting it, in my opinion, you can't. Thanks. I'm going to give you the honest answer. I, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. The sale of the car? Like trading it in.
the ODB right, so for example, or OBD. Right. Yeah, I, I, I don't completely disagree with that. Um, but you know, there was a time, probably five or six years ago, we said the same thing about mobile devices, right? And I think you're seeing it, it it's more common for people to go out and seek that data. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and you know what, that's, that's a whole different area too, is, is actually getting into um, hacking the vehicle. Uh, obviously, I, I didn't, I, I, stayed, I stayed off of that, but um, that's also another, you know, area of, of concern, certainly. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. Yes, um, obviously law enforcement is going to, um, you know, leverage whatever they can. Uh, I mean, it's the same thing with, and, and again, I'm going to refer back to our mobile devices. It's the same thing as law enforcement subpoenaing records and cell towers and things like that. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry, what was your first question? The first question would be uh, the NAV system data. Oh, any yes. NAV That was strictly the stuff that was, in, yeah, in that system, yeah, so. Um, but it's actually going to log everywhere you've been, um, things you've saved, uh, yeah, all that stuff, so, yep. Yeah. So, so on uh, most of your, you know, all your examples, they were using Windows CD, you know, this, mm -hmm. um, and sure, like 2007, that was the heavy hitter of the you know, heavy market. Right. Yes. I, I don't think we're going to see any hard drives again. Um, we tried that, didn't work. Um, I mean, it worked. But again, it, it's going to be, you know, we talk about telematics and, and infotainment. Um, your, your hub that we talk about for, for your infotainment is probably going to be more so something that you're going to use in your everyday life. For example, mine's sitting over there. Um, so you're going to see that more and more. Those are going to be your, you know, your integration pushes, I believe. So, yep. Yep. As it pertains to creating your product, I know when I have a Um, so if you're doing a chip dump, obviously you're going to get all of the data. Um, I don't know about the overriding part, um, but I, I would assume if, if we're just completely doing a chip dump, you're going to get that data. Um, all of the previously saved things. I mean, obviously, I'm sorry? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I wish I, yeah, I don't know exactly how that's going to work. Um, I mean, I would assume you're still going to get it because, I mean, you're getting all of the data off of the chip. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I can't fathom any way that would actually be possible where you can just go in and overwrite the data until it's gone. Um, 
for you know that I mean particular purpose. So. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You're uh, again. You know. You're 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 doing a you're doing a chip dump on that. If that's the way you're going about doing it. Now, with some of the more commercial automated tools, maybe uh, maybe it's not going to pull it off. Uh, but if you're if you're going in and you're dumping all that data out, you're you're pretty much going to get it. <laughs> so yeah, yep. Any other questions? Ah. Um, in my professional opinion, I think it depends on how far I'm driving because I like to, I'm kind of like a, a 695 rock star is what I like to call it. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do like to pair my phone just to have my music and, and, and obviously to be able to talk while I'm driving. Um, am I reluctant? Yeah, I am. I'm also reluctant to have a Gmail account, but I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, this is the thing. I mean, you, you got to make that decision for yourself. You know that when you're pairing your device, you know serial numbers, some of your data um, is going to pop up. And I say some of your data because when, when I uh, ordered that, that Ford Sync from eBay, what I did was I took mine, I had a Ford Edge at the time, and I removed mine, inserted his to see what data I could get through the, the user interface. Um, synced my phone for all of, I don't know, two minutes, and then I also attached it via USB to see what information was going to uh, cross-pollinate. Um, so, you know, you really got to make the decision for yourself, honestly, but yes, your data will sync. You're welcome. All right, anything else? Any other questions? All right, well, that's all I have. Thanks. <laughs>